make good ground in the middle, um, but do it with like a, a rotation of all the, the the middle unit players that yeah. they had. Mm-hmm. So no one had like a no one had like a particular standout performance in in getting the ball going forward yeah. for for witness. But they were just consistently winning the collision, getting the play of the balls, doing the things that Lee were doing to Wigan two yeah. we, three weeks ago, and. Like I say, if it wasn't for them lacking in the ability to maintain an intensity level, they should have absolutely shooed yeah. uh, Lee in this game. But they gave like glimmers of hope to some of Lee's nippy little backs that uh, you know that that they tried to do something for a bit, but they never looked at it. No. Um, for all his his zip and his sp- sort of speedy spark. Ryan Amsher isn't a half back at Super League level. I think yeah. we've seen that so many times. He mm-hmm. consistently they only look, started to look good in attacking positions when Glenn Stewart took over first or second receiver position from um, Ryan Hampshire and he came as a, as a sort of sweeping yeah. extra third sort of extra fullback kind of position. And that's the first time he started to look. But that's his talent, isn't it? it? It's not a distribution. It's it's running ball and you're not going to rip through everybody every single time. No, exactly. And all the work was done by the outside backs yeah. for Lee because they were constantly picking up the ball and trying to get it out their own end. And the yeah. forwards were all tired from trudging back. Um, they missed people like Jamie Acton, I suppose, and Hock to an extent, Chris Green to an extent. They're kind of like their enforcer type mm. forwards. But it did, it did. They lacked all of that, and Witness took full advantage with like using all the space that they had available. The flair, it was nice. They got, you know, they got the bounce in their favour. Mm. I'm still not entirely convinced that Chris Bridge didn't touch the try, touch the ball in the build up to his his try. Um, but if he touched it, it might have gone backwards anyway. But I think there was the faintest of touches. The video ref didn't pick up on. I'm not saying it was necessarily an error. Mm-hmm. Um, so and then witness, yeah, well, they're just way better. Corey Thompson's try where he we ran back around the side went to sort of come in and then yeah. ran back around the outside. Just showed that they were so, so much sharper mm. than their opposition in yeah, this one. Definitely, and we haven't really talked about him much apart from where he was brought up in the uh, in, in the fan feedback. But Ray Chase, what he's what he's bringing to witness now. I mean, you all sort of, we all sort of roll our eyes when Ray Chase changes clubs because it's all kind of always done under the same. Sort of cloud, isn't it? But he makes the hard work that second rowers and centres and forwards put in running those lines worthwhile because when you put in Chris Houston under the sticks and he's got those little touches yeah. and things like that that make the hard work that forwards put in running those lines and making defences think worthwhile because now you've got someone who's who's hitting you and and, putting yeah. you and getting you getting your points on the board, uh, not just doing the line breaky stuff. He actually seems to be prepared to and to play have, his men in and to have. Uh, Meller alongside him, who mm. is a dual run and pass threat as a as a half. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think he's he he could be a high quality player if he was surrounded by high quality players. Yeah. Uh, for me, Joe Meller, mm. um, and some of the lines that young Matt Whitley was running for him as well. I mean, outstanding stuff mm. uh, from that kid in this game. Prop. Maybe he'd be he would be my man of the match um, from this one from that for over the whole. Sort of piece, yeah. young Matt Whitley, but yeah, good stuff from the Vikings. Definitely. What did the stats tell us on this one, then, Mark? This game might have had more points in it. Um, it had the equal most clean breaks in a game this season with twenty-one, and a fairly close uh, twelve to nine count that was won by the home side. So Lee, two tries but nine clean breaks. Mm. Um, other than a poor nine to three penalty count lost by the by witness, Lee only conceded three penalties Jesus. according to my numbers that I got off the Super League so the Super League website numbers. Wow. Um, the Vikings were all over the, the Vikings were asked all over the stats as that flag has been all over the Glasgow coverage. <laughs> Two hundred and ninety five more meters, uh, one point three meters per carry better game. Well like that's that's the thing we're talking about are consistently making inroads. Um two fewer errors in a high fourteen to sixty overall count though. And two percent two point six percent better team tackle success. There you go. Did so, you see the uh witness Vikings flag at almost every good show do you know what that I was at well, Glastonbury. I've got i I've got all my hand up as you know, you know I like my music, but I've not seen any gas we recovery this week. Did we? 
We didn't, Mark. But we've I done a lot of we've done a lot of stuff for you in this podcast. So I watch quite a lot of Glastonbury. I've watched like bits of Glastonbury, mostly the headliners, though. Yeah. Ed Sheeran. Did you watch? Uh, I take it you watched Radiohead. Yeah, I recorded it and watched it when I got in. I got asked if I'd seen the Radiohead set on Saturday night, and I was able to trot out my my usual story about Radiohead Live, which is seeing it with you at Leeds. Um, after we'd we'd all agreed that we'd go to watch Dead Mouse, as I recall, and we I were all going to watch we Dead were all having a dancey dance, and then one of our mutual friends, who's who's related to a bell ringer, decided that it would be nice if we were all stood together to watch Radiohead. So we promptly left the dance. I didn't make you come to Radiohead. No, I don't mean you. I don't mean you, mate. I mean Jane Lloyd. Oh, she was the one in fucking Underground Railroaders, all out fucking Dead Mouse. I was having a right nice dance to Dead Mouse, and then we went to watch Radiohead, which. I know they're a great band, I know what they do is wonderful, but I'm all about the greatest hits. I want Just, and I want Creep, and I want... I well, then watch I the, want Karma Police. Watch I should probably set. watch the Glastonbury set, because that's probably what they do. It started with a couple of, like, a new song, then an, el- an album track off of OK Computer, then a new song, then an album, and it sort of f- then started to drip feed them in, and then right. by the end it was, and they finished with Creep, and... Right. Well, it was magnificent. It's, it's, it's it. left me with a, a, a permanent resident semi on until I go and see them myself next next Tuesday. Listen, that says a great deal about your enjoyment of radio that, Wednesday, Tom, that, that Tom York can inspire sexual <laughs> arousal in you. Anyway, that was your week talked about. Well, no, it wasn't really, was it? it was no, but we'll go, we're week. moving on to individual but, stats, aren't we? Well, let's talk about your individual week, if you wish. Do you feel like you've been neglected? No, I'm fine. You're all right. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Okay, who stood out for the Witness Vikings then? Corey Thompson, two tries, eight tackle boss, 225 metres, two clean breaks. Mm. Uh, Matt Whitley with a try, six tackle boss, 126 metres, three clean breaks. Ryan Inns, a try, 139 metres. That kid keeps uh, putting numbers up and scoring tries, doesn't he? Mm. Chris Bridge, very good in this one. One try, one try, six tackle boss, 131 metres, three successful offloads, and was kicking the goals, wasn't he? Chris Houston, two tries, Mm -hmm. uh, makes it in there. There you go, for the old man himself and for the Centurions. Mitchell Brown, 193 running metres. Whenever you put him at fullback in that side, he really takes... He uh, turns the ball so leaves hard, the charge, it? but it just doesn't... Nothing else came off the back of that, really. Ryan mm. Hampshire, 124 metres. Corey Patterson, 100 metres. Glenn Stewart, 43 tackles. Fantastic. OK, so... Uh, Rangi Chase uh, has been given a grade okay. B charge, shoulder right. uh, shoulder hit charge oh. um, from this one. So uh, could oh, yeah. be missing against Wigan, which Phew. will be massive. Yeah, a few charges coming up this week, aren't there? Right. Yeah, eight. So I'll pick them off as we go, actually. Yeah. I've got them all written down. To Friday night, then we'll go down to the John Smith Stadium. Huddersfield 19, Wigan Warriors 19. And we have a feedback on this one. In front of? In front of. Oh, I didn't do the first one. So I'll tell you what, Witness fans. You've had a shit season, and all we've done is kind of not gloss over. You're like, oh, witness is garbage. You start picking up a bit of form, and you're the first game up on the on the game reviews for the first time in a long time. I'm not saying you're all giddy listening to Super League Pod, Reddit weary, but all we've done is fuck up your review, talk about other stuff over the top of it, and intersperse it with entirely non witness related anecdotes. So to Paul O'Brien and to um, who else have we got? Ludo, Ludo, and Hewitt, all you guys. Jay Green. Sorry, I guess. I guess sorry, but you know you still won, so it's all good. Um, five six oh four was it that game? Yeah, and there were five thousand seven hundred eighteen at the John Smith Stadium to watch Huddersfield and Wigan draw nineteen apiece. Refereed by Gareth Hewer. Uh, Dr Hideous got in touch he said I was supposed to be there but some bastard decided to crash his car so I went nowhere fast for hours on the motorway looks like I missed a cracker now in a travel lodge that smells of despair oh dear that's a great one the uh, the smell of despair um, I think we've all experienced that well given that we didn't get a review from anyone actually went to the game yeah. do we need to spend much time on it well you went to the game why don't you tell us a bit about it well Wigan were, we still have a duty of care to our listeners Mark Wigan were Pretty diabolical um, for the first twenty to thirty minutes mm-hmm. in the game. Then, couple of substitutions sharpened up the distribution from dummy half and ran a bit more purposefully, a bit straighter uh, with forwards actually running the ball. Willie Angster had one of his best games in a Wigan shirt off the bench to play prop, pretty direct when he came on, mm-hmm. which was um, a bonus from either forwards not getting behind the ball or not running it straight um, up to that point in the game mm-hmm. um, so that was so that's that so we off the back of that Wigan were actually able to force Huddersfield into a few penalties um, and then Wigan turned the momentum around with the Liam Marshall 
the John Bateman try first of all, yeah. and then the Liam Marshall try. Wigan took the lead early in the second half with a second Sunken Liam Marshall try. Controversy with the Liam Marshall try. Yeah, we'll get to that. Okay. Uh, and then, um, yeah, Danny Brough had just kicked a random field goal in the first half, obviously thinking the defence could keep out a Wigan attack. That at that point was absolutely diabolical, clueless, static, um, completely reliant on individual pieces of brilliance, the mm. Wigan attack again in this game, and there weren't enough of them. Huddersfield attack was completely dependent on Ikehifo scaring people to fuck and then the ball getting out as quick as it could to Kudjo and McGilvery as wow. well. So both teams' attacks were pretty um, left pretty wanting, I would say, in this game. Get, you know, shows the low score line. Um, yeah, it was tied up with a very good forty meter drop goal from George Williams mm. that the, the Giants weren't expecting to be kicked. And then um, a couple of pathetic attempts from Bruff and Lulu High who dropped goals. Giants got a couple of opportunities in Wigan's end and dropped the ball. Wigan got a couple of opportunities but didn't have the execution to get it to the man in space to quite get far enough up the field in the last minute. And then yeah. it sort of petered out. Yeah, but but um, obviously the talking point of the the talking point that everyone's heard about is a Wigan try. The two talking points from the game is probably two tries that should never have been given according to whoever you want to ask. But um, I, I'm I'm biased, obviously. Mm. I don't hide from the fact that I'm biased, certainly more biased than any officials and the RFL are. Um, and I think the Wigan try was good and I think the Huddersfield try was a forward pass. But a draw was definitely a fair result. Right, uh, But yeah, the controversial. So Liam Marshall's first try came from a kick from George Williams. Um, we've seen it a million times this year. Liam Marshall just gets to the ball before he himself would have been over the in-goal line and according to the in-goal judge, very close to it. The referee also similarly quite close to it and... The touch judge similarly quite close to it. Mm-hmm. All for it was a try and we're happy to award the try from my angle, which was looking down on the play from above from the away end, because it, it happened in front of us. It looked like a, it looked like he'd got it looked like the he wasn't in touch, but the ball heard I wasn't sure if he had it in his uh in his hands when it got down, but it was so fast. The Huddersfield Giants fans had the opposite view in yeah. You know, all the ways. And they thought he was clearly out into touch with a foot over the line and blah, 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 blah. The ball was closer to the stand than it was to the in-goal area, etc. Um, the replays are so fast when you watch it that it's inconclusive. Mm-hmm. When you freeze frame it, it's inconclusive. Um, I'd be inclined to say with a ball being round... It's going to touch the grass before it touches the line if you put it down simultaneous sort of thing. And that's the that's the very worst circumstance of that try is it just touches the grass before the line in, in my way of viewing it. But it's so hard to call yeah. that if it had gone either way, I don't think anyone would... Everyone would complain because, there are, because the RFL's biased and the referees hate our team. But, um, yeah, then Huddersfield tied, like got the lead again right late in the game with a... The best way to describe it is a volleyball setup. What's <laughs> what's it called? Where the like set spike. For, no the spikes when they hit it down. So oh, it's right. like the set. Yeah, the, the set. Um, so from Leroy Kudjo to Jermaine McGilvery, and we've all seen this over and over and over again from these two players. Mm-hmm. Kudjo does this little toss over the top. That's almost always forwards. Never ever given forwards. This one was forwards by two yards. Do you think that's because the RFL are biased? I think it's because the referees want Wigan to lose um, slash want Huddersfield to lose. So, um, <laughs> so they hate everyone. Yeah, yeah. This is bias. But to be honest, a draw was totally the fair result. Now, I'll tell you an anecdote from the people who were sat behind me. Oh, please do. Um, this one chap on, over my right shoulder was going absolutely nuts at decisions that were happening all the way up the field, right. far end of the field. Um, Huddersfield had. We couldn't tell what had gone on, but it came out of a play of the ball right on the line Sam Tompkins got on the ball and looks to have been then tackled into the in goal on a greasy surface right. and it was a goal line dropout was given and I think after that Huddersfield actually scored a try okay. um, in either the next set or Wigan gave away a stupid penalty or made, whatever but Huddersfield scored not long after that and um, this guy behind was convinced that it was a knock-on and what on earth are the referees doing? They're clearly biased against Wigan, etc., etc. 
Um, and then when Wigan scored that Marshall try, he said like he wasn't sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and I pointed out to him like if we if we stay quiet for a second, we're hearing the Giants fans having a go at the referee for being a cheat when within the. 